this imposition of a misery on the lives of the people, this has to change. And if this has to change, the presence of the left, a stronger presence of the left, particularly for CPI, is absolutely necessary. And in order to ensure that an alternative pro-people policy direction is adopted by this alternative secular government. Because what have we seen in the last 10 years, particularly in the last 5 years, every section of our people has been on the streets in struggles. We have seen the historic Kisan uh, agitation and the movement, which is the only thing that forced Narendra Modi to withdraw bills that they had passed in the parliament. All the agree laws had to be withdrawn, repealed. The big strikes of the working class and the action are actually protesting and opposing the manner in which the privatization, last year privatization was taking place. The women, the students, the youth, they are all on the streets demanding better livelihood and demanding their fundamentally, constitutionally guaranteed rights. So in this situation, the presence of the left is very critical in the parliament. While the importance of the left and the CPIM lies in the fact that irrespective of the parliamentary strength, we set the agenda before the country. Whether it is the Islam struggles, whether it is the working class struggles, whether it is the struggles of the youth, students, women, etc. or the various other sections. But this has to translate into alternative policies. And that is only possible with the pressure that the left will exert in the parliament. So our appeal to increase the strength of the CPIM and the left in the parliament and to stop this loop of our national uh, assets and to end the most corrupt government independent of India has ever known and to ensure that the constitution of India prevails and the um, of central agencies and officers are not misused to target the opposition and its leaders and thereby undermine democracy in our country. So with these objectives in mind, this manifesto contains our essential points and demands that we have made, which is there in the summary which we have circulated to you. And in section 2 of the constitution, we will have detailed uh, demands that we would want the country and I mean the government, the Portuguese government to implement in the interest of the country and the people. So I do not uh, propose to I mean, the main points of the manifesto that we have put before is that the CPI will pursue the line of an uncompromising adherence to secularism, that is, the separation of religion from politics, state, and the government. And we'll insist on having a law against hate speech and crimes, and we are committed to scrapping the Citizenship Amendment Act, the CAA. Further, we stand for scrapping of all preconial laws like the UAPA and the PMLA, and protect the autonomy of independent institutions and in defense of the democratic rights of the people. We are committed to protect India's economic sovereignty, the privatization of the public sector must be revisited and reversed. A tax on the super rich, along with a general wealth tax and an inherent inheritance tax, must be legislated. Workers' rights reflected in the pro worker laws must replace the four labor codes now. Food security depends on ensuring the security of the farmers and the essential aspect of this is to give a legal guarantee for a minimum support price in accordance with the Swaminathan Commission's recommendation. We stand for the right to work as a fundamental right, as a constitutional right. 
the vacancies that are now existing in government services and public sector units must be immediately be filled up. While Manrega must be strengthened and expanded, we will want a similar guarantee for urban youth, like you have for the rural youth under Manrega. There should be an urban guarantee of employment guarantee. Uh, law, law act that must be that must be legislated and India's demographic data. Today we are one of the youngest countries in the world and the degree of unemployment in our edu educated graduate graduate youth is nearly forty two percent. This is a warping I mean the complete disruption of the demographic dividend of India. This youth, which should have been an asset in building a better India, is now being destroyed and rendered directionless, which has serious consequences for our society and the future. This has to change. The universal right to education and privatization of higher education will, will oppose that. And we would like at least 6% of our GDP to be earmarked for spending on education. And likewise, we would want the principle of federalism to be strengthened and the constitutional rights of the states, which have been, uh, which have been thoroughly assaulted by the Bodhi government, that will have to be reversed and at least 50% of all tax revenue collected by the center must be devolved to the states. Right now the finance commission has stopped at forty two percent, but in reality it is not beyond thirty two percent. It should be at least fifty percent. That is our demand. The reservations in the private sector must be legalized and enacted. And an OPC census must be conducted with the general census. That is long overdue now. 2021 census is not yet begun. Along with that, an OPC census has to be undertaken and the immediate implementation of the reservation for women, which the drama was enacted, saying that uh, we are doing it, but now it will only be after the next census and after delimitation. And that has been delayed. That has to be implemented immediately. And the delivery of justice for uh, has to be speeded up, particularly for crimes against women and children. The use of money power in the elections. We, we stand for the very wide electoral reforms. And the important element is that to ensure a free and fair election and a level playing field, the role of money power has to be curbed. And we have now seen, with all the information coming out and shocking uh, exposures coming out to the electoral board scheme and the manner in which central agencies were misused in order to collect money, extortion, the manner in which street, sweetheart deals were handed over and public assets handed over to private players in return for such donations to electoral boards. And Overall money laundering that has taken place, where companies have bought and donated electoral bonds multiple times of the profits that they have shown in their in their books. Where did this money come from? And there is very serious. Uh, uh, I mean, the caution has been exercised, and the culprits must be booked. Where is this money coming from? And if it's foreign sources through which this money is being laundered through the uh, electoral bonds, then it's a very, very serious matter that needs to be investigated. Electoral bonds information, all of it clearly falls under the PMLA. Why is the ED not moving? Or under Modi, is the ED only to target the opposition and the opposition leaders? The clear cut case of money laundering you have here with all the information provided, but the ED is just not moving on any one of these issues. So that clearly shows the 
character orientation of this government. And uh, we stand therefore for state funding of elections, like the system that, work, that works in many other countries, modern democracies like Germany, etc. So that sort of a system will have to be introduced, and wide ranging consultations and wide ranging electoral reforms are required. We stand for the immediate elections to the Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. Last time Parliament elections took place, but they refused to hold the Assembly election. If the security is, is uh, okay for the parliament election, you can't understand why that can be the reason for not holding assembly elections. This is clearly denying the people of Jammu and Kashmir their democratic rights, their democratic representation, and this is something that has to be immediately conducted and, in fact, should have been held with these general elections. But nevertheless, it has to be immediately held. Foreign policy of India requires to be brought back to its original shape of an independent foreign policy, which under Modi has been reduced to be a junior partner of US imperialism. Even on an issue like the criminal genocide that is taking place against the Palestinians, the government of India has been low for only for the namesake once in a while voting with the resolution, once abstaining on the resolution calling for ceasefire in the UN General Assembly. And for the first time, our solidarity with the, with the liberation movements, and particularly the Palestinians for their own life, has been thoroughly and completely betrayed. It is today a foreign policy oriented towards US Israel India nexus. It is this nexus which will be disastrous for our relations with our own neighbors, for our relations and global standing. And <clears throat> this communal corporate uh, nexus will have to be reversed. And in order to do that, the BJP must be defeated in the coming elections. This is the essence of the manifesto. The details will be up there in the what has been distributed to you. So you can uh, read it. So this is what uh, we want to Convey to you and the people of India to you. So now, here we go. Dara, there is one provision that you may have discussed about continued commitment to the autonomous status granted by Article 370 in Kashmir. Uh, so, this, some part is supporting the Article 370. Are you also promising to reach to the same status that has been abrogated by this government? No, we are saying that we have contested the abrogation. In the, in the Supreme Court. We all do that in mean, the pure way of. And we are saying that the autonomous status or the special status that was granted at the time of partition and signing of the instrument of accession. That must be respected. 